That was weird. The elevator just stopped. Mother? Okay. No reason to panic. Small reason to panic. Hello? <laughs> there is no curse. There is no curse. There is no curse. All right. What do I do if the elevator falls? Okay, I, um, I think I'm supposed to jump in the air. No. Lay on the ground. Castle? What are you doing? That whole thing, the, then the light, the light, and then the whole thing went. I thought, the, I thought the elevator was gonna fall. That wasn't you, was it? Because that wasn't funny. No, no, I'm not that cruel. It's an old elevator. You know what? Let's get maintenance up here and tell them not to let anyone on here before it's fixed. Are you okay? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm gonna splash some water on my face and then throw up a little bit. I don't know. I was gonna make a coffee and the cappuccino machine started shaking. And just as I hit the deck, it exploded. You could have been killed. I know. <laughs> oh, very okay. Very funny. Yes, you got me. Ooh, I'm Castle. I don't believe in curses. <laughs> What, did you get a bomb disposal to rig something up? Yeah, it was all flash and no damage. And the chair? I just pulled a couple of screws and let gravity do the rest. Night Castle. Vivian Marchand, the psychic medium? You've heard of her? Yeah, she was very popular in certain Manhattan circles. Matter of fact, she did a reading for me at a society party about eight years ago. It was pretty extraordinary. Extraordinary? She got everything right. You know, come to think of it, she told me that a beautiful woman would one day move into my loft and stay with me forever. She neglected to mention it was my mother. <laughs> psychics can tell the future, mediums can tell the future, and talk to the dead. That's like saying that psychics are con artists, and mediums are con artists and charlatans. I mean, in the end, they're all just fakes. You sound pretty certain of yourself. That's because when I started as a cop, I wasted a lot of time on clairvoyance calling tip lines with information that never led to anything. I mean, I'm surprised you're so gullible. I'm not saying I can speak with the dead. I'm just willing to admit that there are people in this world who are more sensitive than me. Now, that's not hard to believe. Sometimes I have dreams that are meaningful. Last night, I had a dream about you. OK. And I can't really explain why, but I feel very strongly that I'm supposed to tell you something, something important. Are you ready? I'm ready. Alexander. Alexander? Alexander. I don't know who he is or what he means to you. I don't know any Alexander. You will. You will meet an Alexander, and he will be extremely important to you. At some future date, he may save your life. OK. Um, good to know. <sighs> Thank you, detective. Thank you, Penny. What did Penny say about Alexander? Oh, nothing. Just some silly stuff that didn't really make any sense. Why? Because my middle name is Alexander. I thought your middle name was Edgar. Been perusing the personal section of the Richard Castle website again, have we? No, I changed my middle name to Edgar for Edgar Allan Poe back when I changed my last name to Castle. My given name is Richard Alexander Rogers. What a coincidence, huh? It's no surprise. It's called explosive decompression. From what? What would cause this? It's the result of exposure to a zero atmosphere environment. Zero atmosphere? As in outer space? Yep. Or? I don't have an or for you right now, sweetie. I have to get her body back to the morgue, and then I may have some answers. OK, well, her body's in a car in the middle of the rail yard, so clearly she wasn't killed in outer space. There's got to be another explanation. Check this out. She was reading Taken by the Fourth Kind, a book on alien abductions. 
So what's your theory, Castle, that she was abducted and then killed by aliens? Well, a story that makes more sense is uh, alien abduction gone wrong. One that ends with Marie being accidentally blasted out of the airlock of the alien spaceship. Marie Subaru, a sober-minded scientist, believes she was abducted by aliens after intercepting strange radio signals. Using a telescope, she photographs the source of the signal. The next day, dies mysteriously. Then, her office is raided by shadowy government agents. I'm not asking you to dye your hair red and call me Mulder. I would simply ask that you consider the possibility that Marie had knowledge of or made contact with something up there that somehow led to her death. We will continue our investigation and solve this case, and it will have nothing to do with Little Green Men. I agree, actually. The truth, the real truth, is out there. Dead battery. Maintenance just replaced it. My phone isn't working. Mine isn't either. Neither is my watch. You have a logical explanation for this too, right? You okay? Wow. Castle, did that really happen? Do I have a... Oh, no. Because you got it. <gasps> the time code lines up with the night that Valtini said he was attacked. According to ER records, was admitted that night, knife wounds to the buttocks. The sword of justice, brother. Wait, is that? No. It can't be. It is. Our killer is a superhero. Really? A superhero? Yeah, our witness from the alley confirms that she saw this man kill Tyler Ferris. Oh, why didn't she say that before? She didn't think that we'd believe her. And quite frankly, she's right. A mass vigilante on the loose, hacking people up. Tell me what your plan is to apprehend this individual. We're, uh, we're looking for murders with the same M.O. We're also checking into enemies that Tyler Ferris and Tony Valtini might have had in common. And finally, we're trying to track down where that suit and sword came from. Reach out to Bellevue. They probably admitted our suspect before. He's clearly delusional or psychotic. Yes, sir. Keep me apprised, Detective. Yes. Don't waste your time on Bellevue. You were eavesdropping? Can I help it if I have superhuman daredevil-like hearing? Our killer is not crazy. He cut a man in two, and he's running around wearing a superhero suit. You want to go now? Well, unless, of course, you're afraid. Yeah, right. No, I get it. I mean, it is a haunted house. I'm not scared, Castle. No, no, you're right. You're right. I mean, the demon has tasted fresh blood. His thirst may not be slaked with just one victim. Okay, come on. Listen, if you're not scared, just say it. No. Come on, you know you want to. I don't want to say it, Castle. For me, please. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I heard this voice whispering, Kate, Kate. It was coming from this room that the owners had locked up and told my parents never to go in it. Except that night, there's this weird glow underneath the door. And then I heard the voice again, Kate. And so I walked up to the door. And this time, it wasn't locked. And I turned the doorknob, and I opened it up, and then I saw it. What was it? What did you see? Ah, uh, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> yes, you got me. How long have you known me, Castle? Of course I don't believe in ghosts. <laughs> What was that? What the hell's going on? I think 
that's a zombie. That's a zombie horde. There's no such thing as zombies. Sure, I don't have to tell you to aim for the head. Vicky, behind us, we're surrounded. Jeez, oh jeez. You don't have enough bullets. It's Ground Zero for World War Z. Get behind me. We'll have to fight our way out. Uh, uh, this is so not cool. There's no way this is real. Pretending to be zombies. Hey, 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 take it easy. We're just zombie walking here. You what? Z zombie walking. It's like an amped up form of tag. We, we dress up like zombies and we chase the normals. That would be us. Yeah, yeah. If we tag them, we turn them and then they become zombies too. Look, if this is because we didn't get a permit. It's I... not. You're all coming with me now. Time stamp's 4.06 a.m. It's Fitz time of death. That's our guy. Yeah, but it's not Charlie. Wait, what is he wearing? That looks like an old-fashioned suit. Circa 1870, and his shirt's missing a cuff. Whoa. He almost got hit by that taxi. Didn't even flinch. Well, maybe this is why. Look what we get from the other angle. friends that is a zombie the killer's a zombie wow she looks like she's been scared to death literally is that based on your vast medical experience mr castle no based on the fact she looks like an edward Munk painting really freaky so what was the cause of death well, there's no external trauma, no puncture or stab wounds. Once I get her on the slab, I'll know more about how she died and who did it. If it was a who? Meaning? Meaning she said, it's coming for me, not he or she, but it. Look at what she was researching here. How to keep away evil. How to ward off evil spirits. A book on urban legends. Over by the door? Horseshoes. I've clocked two Indian wood chimes. There? And there. These are things used to ward off evil spirits. Like Perlmutter. I heard that. There is one other way he could have gotten that information. He could be talking to his brother. Castle, he was talking with someone on the outside. He hasn't been communing with the dead. Well, we can't be sure, and we're running out of time. So I'm going to scratch off number 27 on my bucket list. Do you remember that uh, blue porcelain vase you had in your dining room table? Yeah, the one that the wind blew over. Yeah, about that. I was playing Wii Tennis in the living room. You broke my vase? Boss. Vase is acceptable, too. You know what? You can stop worrying about the spirits getting to you because I just might kill you myself. I don't know what happened here. Yet. That's it. That's all you've got. But I can assure you that it has nothing to do with Nigel Malloy rising from the dead. It's his brother. Leopold Malloy is behind all of this. Jordan is a good student, but she's a bit of a black sheep. What's for lunch, Jordan? Linoleum? <laughs> that is the event. The outcast. The mean girls. The rage that erupts in a telekinetic attack. This is a real-life carry. You were attacked by a ninja, and you witnessed it. I... no, sir, not exactly. Because he made a sound and drew her away. Ninjas are masters of the surprise attack. In any case, we think that he's our killer because the knife that he took from Castle appears to be our murder weapon. So what you're saying is that... Our killer is a ninja. Or he is just an athletic person with a hooded tracksuit. Back it. Castle, what happened? Uh, Ninja stole the murder weapon. 